It's the same system. And when connective tissue breaks down, either because of inflammation or some kind of immune problem, connective tissue diseases are relatively common. I just did a blog post on connective tissue diseases. If your connective tissue is breaking down from, because you have a disease, inflammation, immunity, or if it's breaking down from malnutrition, or if it's breaking down just because you're not absorbing, if you're getting older and you're starting to get arthritis, well, guess what? If you have arthritis, uh, osteoarthritis, you got wrink you're, you're predisposed to wrinkles too. Predis wrinkles are osteoarthritis of the skin. Osteoporosis is osteoarthritis of the bone. Aneurysms, weak blood vessels, are osteoarthritis of the connective tissue in the blood vessels. Leaky gut syndrome is osteoarthritis of the digestive tract. See, it's the same stuff. That's good news because it means when you take your glucosamine or you do your bone soup or you do your vitamin C or you do your EFAs, or you eat your protein, your amino acids, and you reduce your sugar intake and you uh, stay away from inflammatory foods, all in the interests of improving wounding post-surgery, you'll also be building bone and building your digestive tract, supporting digestive health. You'll also be supporting blood vessel health, improving the, the resilience and the strength of your blood vessels, reducing the risks, the likelihoods of cardiovascular disease, all from supplementing to build connective tissue. As far as vitamin E goes, right before the skin is about to be cut, pre-surgery, even a couple weeks pre-surgery and post-surgery, that's when you want to start to use vitamin E topically on the area to be healed. Now, doc, orally too, by the way. Once the scar is there, you're not going to do anything, but you can use the vitamin E topically to, to improve healing. Now, you've got to be a little bit careful with vitamin E because most vitamin E comes in soy oil. And soy oil can be a problem for some people. So some people get rashes and dermatitis and, and even break out by using topical vitamin E. You've got to be a little bit careful with topical vitamin E. And pay attention to, the, to uh, rashes, et cetera, any, kind of, any, any sign that your immune system topically has been activated, that's a reason to not use it, vitamin E topically. But internally, definitely use it. And unfortunately, vitamin E is one of those vitamins that your doctor will tell you not to take pre-surgery. They'll say, t they'll say for a couple weeks or a week before your surgery, don't take vitamin E. You know why? Because vitamin E thins the blood. And doctors are afraid you'll bleed to death. That's seriously why. If you have vitamin E, it may make you bleed to death. And the problem is blood supply is important for healing. So while your doctor may tell you not to take vitamin E, if you decide you want to take vitamin E to accelerate the healing process, tell a doctor. It's your right to take it. You don't have to do what your doctor tells you to do. Now, you do have to tell him. It's only polite. It's only right to tell your doctor what you're doing. You don't want to, you don't want to work behind his back because he's trying to help. As misguided as he may be, he's still trying to help you, and it's only fair to tell him what you're doing. But if you decide you want to take vitamin E or vitamin C or you want to be on your nutrients, because doctors, surgeons will say to get off all your nutrients. Doctors will tell you to get off all your nutrients when you're in the hospital. It's our right to take nutritional supplements. You just tell your doctor or you find another doctor. Vitamin E can be very helpful. And it, and it can also be helpful for accelerating the healing process because it improves oxygenation and nutrition and detoxification by thinning the blood. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're talking about wound healing nutrition specifically vitamin E, which is a blood thinner, in addition to being important for helping speed up healing, speed up the healing of wounds. You can use a pre-treatment, although, or pre-surgery. Although physicians don't like vitamin E, they'll tell you to not to use vitamin E. They'll tell you not to use vitamin K after surgery. They'll tell you not to eat broccoli after surgery. We all got to make our own decisions, though. If you read up on nutrition, you're going to probably know more about nutrition and how it works than your physician. They just, that's not what they do, although it's changing. In fairness, in fairness, new, uh, physicians are starting to understand how important nutrition is because it's, it's so obvious. However, they still think of it like drugs. They still think of it like medicine. They still think of it like poison. They're, they're, 
entranced by this pharmacomedical model where you poison the body back to health. So they just assume that if you use nutrients to be healthy, then it's got to have this poison-like effect. It doesn't work that way with nutrition. The body takes in nutrition when it needs it, and it doesn't take it when it doesn't. You're not going to get sicker by using nutrition. That's silly. That's doctor thing. That's pharmacomedical model thinking. I'm sorry. I don't mean to pick on doctors. It's the pharmacomedical model. So don't be intimidated. Make your own decisions, but always let your physician know what you're doing. It's only fair. He has to be able to factor it into your protocol. It's not fair to wean yourself or to, to take yourself off your drugs without telling your doctor if you're going to be working with a doctor. Now, I, you may want to find another doctor. That's probably, that might, be not, might not be a bad idea if you don't like the way your doctor's working with you. But if you work with a physician, you want to make sure that he's aware of what you're doing. Vitamin C is also very important, as topically as well as internally. From the, uh, from the journal, where is this? Lasers in Surgery and Medicine, Vitamin C, E, and Ferulic Acid Speed Post-Laser Wound Healing. How do you like that? Topically, this is. Patients were treated with vitamin C, E, and ferulic acid. Ferulic acid, by the way, is a really interesting phyto, that is plant nutrient that's found, in, um, it's found everywhere in plants, really. Wheat, bran, the bran part of grains has, uh, has ferulic acid in it, artichokes, oranges, coffee, pineapple, apple. Uh, it's a class of phytonutrients of which there are lots. You don't want to get all into ferulic acid as a supplement on its own. It's part of the complex of phytonutrients, plant nutrients, that are found in all fruits and vegetables and grains and growing matter. These are powerful nutrients. What we call phytonutrients are just as powerful, uh, maybe not just as, but pr pretty close to as powerful as vitamins. We don't call them vitamins. We can't make them. And whether they're essential or not in the sense that vitamins are is up for debate. It may be that they're just as essential as vitamins. And we just kind of closed the book on essential nutrients when we discovered the last vitamin, which is vitamin E. So it may be, it may be that ferulic acid and chlorogenic acid and coumarin uh, and coumaric acid, these are all examples of phytonutrients, are just as essential as vitamins. We don't know. But in any case, ferulic acid along with vitamin C and vitamin E, according to this study, speeds post-laser wound healing, and you can rest assured if it speeds post-laser wound healing, it's going to have a significant growth and repair and renewal benefit for your bones and for your digestive system and for your blood vessels, etc. as we said before we went to break. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have a couple lines open for you. Brian in New Hampshire, what's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side, Brian. Hey, Ben. I, I hey. Wanted, uh, I wanted to talk to you about Retinol palmitate versus retinol. And okay, good. I, speak speak a little bit louder or get me off speaker here. I'm having a hard time hearing you. Oh, my apologies. No matter. worries. No worries. Okay. Uh, well, there's some and by the world, uh, well, one of those uh, chain stores. But Brian, I'm sorry, man. I'm, I, we cannot hear you. You're, you're just coming off. I don't know if I'm on speaker or what the deal is, but it, I'm going to have to let you go if I can't oh, hear you. Ben, I, you, you're still not good. Uh, all right, my apologies. You can hang up. Is that it? Okay. I'm sorry, Brian. Um, yeah, call back if you have a better line. I could not understand what you're saying. I think he said something about retinol and retinal palmitate, which is actually a good question. There's three, and we've, we've talked about this in the past, but uh, if you're listening, Brian, if that was your question, I think you had something to do with retinol and retinal palmitate. There are three main forms of vitamin A, okay? The most, and vitamin A is arguably, and I say arguably because vitamin C is also important, but arguably vitamin A is the most important of all the topical skin vitamins. I, it, I don't know how much clearer I can be. If you're using an anti-aging skincare product line and it has seaweed in it, like l this product called La Mer, which costs like $1,000 for four ounces, or it's got hyaluronic acid in it, or it's, it's made by some kindly herbalist who, who has herbs in it. If you're not using vitamin A, folks, you are missing the boat on anti-aging skincare. I don't know how much clearer I could be. I'm telling you this as a compounding pharmacist, as somebody who's been studying the skin and healing for 30 years, you are missing the boat on topical skincare if you're not using vitamin A. Now, there's different forms of vitamin A. There's three main forms of it, and they're not all the same. I think we got Brian back. Brian, are you there? Yes, sir. Hey, what's going on? Much better connection. So you, you, were right, you asking about retinol versus retinal palmitate? 
Yeah, because uh, there's products that you talk about skincare products that are really misleading. Well, yes. there's a product in the in vitamin world that's called retinol, right? There's not a, the, the ingredient retinol isn't even listed. Retinol isn't that terrible? Is. Isn't that it's, awful? It, isn't that blatant fraud? Don't you want to just choke somebody? I mean, I, it makes me, as a healthcare professional, it makes me so angry. I've left companies that did that. It, it is so rude because people don't think the skin matters. So they treat customers and they treat mostly women but men nowadays too as if we're idiots and it's not fair and I know what you're talking about Brian I've seen products like that usually they'll put a speck of something in at the bottom and then they'll tell you oh it's a ret it's a vitamin A cream and they're expensive sometimes too now that's probably a cheapo product to be fair but still it doesn't matter it's you like you say it's fraud are you sure it doesn't say retinol anywhere it, it doesn't say retinol anywhere. The only ingredient is retinol palmitate. And will you I know shoot me a, will you, can you take a picture on your do you have an iPhone or something, an Android or so, uh, a Samsung? I do. Something? I do. Can you take a picture and send it to me? Yeah, I can take a picture here and email to you tonight. Yeah, send me an email, ben at ksco.com. Send me the, the, the name of the product with a picture and then the ingredients. I want to look at that because that's, yeah, 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 that's awful. And, yes, that happens a lot. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I was going to say, like, my fiance, who's a nutritional advisor, advises the people that are buying it that are looking for retinol that it's not, it's not retinol. It's blatant fraud. Uh, she wants. She actually wants to know if she can actually be a distributor for you at the same token. Is there any? Is there a, is there a possibility for your truth treatment products? Uh, I got a. I got a little legal non-compete that I am dealing with. So I have a couple about a year and a half. And after that, we're going to go full bore. We might have distributors after that. I'm not sure how I want to do it after that. So, but for a year and a half, I'm limited to just doing it on the internet because of my non-compete. I sold my business last year. I had a skincare company and a and a pharmacy, and I sold it. And they were they didn't want me to compete. Understandably, so. Understand. Uh, so I signed a non-compete. So uh, anyway, but in a year and a half, I might consider that. But let me, let me talk about, I want to talk about those vitamins. That's a very interesting question that you asked because there is a very important yeah. distinction. And we always think, and uh, did you have anything else you want to say? I'm going to let you go otherwise. No, go ahead. Thank you so much, Brian. I appreciate your call. Happy holidays, man. To you and your girl, too. Okay, buddy. Yeah, so you, now that you know how important vitamin A is, you may be bamboozled into buying a product like that. So let me, just, let me just break it down here a little bit. There's three forms of vitamin A. And you can go back on the archives, too, because we talked a lot about this a couple of months ago or maybe a month ago or so. There's the music. So we'll take a break, and we'll come back. And uh, if you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get to you when we come back, and then we'll talk also about the uh, three main forms of vitamin A and the forms that you want to look for. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you. If you're interested in purchasing any of our true tre- treatment products, including our retinol 5% gel, 5% retinol. We'll talk about that here in a sec. You're not going to see that anywhere, plus a whole bunch of vitamin C. Vitamin C, vitamin A, those are the two go-to anti-aging, wound healing, all-around skin health ingredients you want to look for. There's three forms of vitamin A, okay? You've got the super-duper active form. That requires a prescription, so we'll leave that aside for now. That's called retinoic acid. It was first in the brand name product, Retin-A. Uh, and the second... Uh, the weakest form, that's the strongest form, that's a prescription, we'll put that aside for now. The uh, two forms that are available over the counter are called retinyl palmitate. It's two words, retinyl palmitate. R-E-T-I-N-Y-L, retinyl palmitate, P-A-L-M-I-T-A-T-E. Palmitate's an interesting thing, a fatty acid, by the way, uh, and it's found in the skin. So you'll see a lot of palmitates in skincare ingredients because it is found in the skin. It's a fatty acid. So retinyl palmitate is vitamin A wrapped around in a bubble of fat. And that wrap, because it's wrapped around in a bubble of fat, it is not as strong as the other forms of vitamin A. The uh, palmitate wrapping, if you will, sort of weakens the molecule. That makes it relatively non-effective. In fact, pretty non-effective as far as getting vitamin A benefits. However, the second form, retinol, that one's incredible. It's nowhere near as potent as retinoic acid. In fact, it's about 100 times less potent, but it has dramatic effects, vitamin A effects. It's handled by the skin very well. It makes the skin look awesome. You can use it, uh, you can use it to f- have a skin peel or to peel dark spots or acne. It's just amazing, amazing stuff. However, it does have a reputation for causing irritation, redness, and excessive flaking of the skin. 
If that occurs when you use your retinol, that's not a reason to not use retinol. That's a reason to take care of your skin via nutrition. In fact, deficiencies in essential fatty acids, especially deficiencies in EFAs, but also deficiencies in vitamin E, deficiencies in vitamin A internally, these can exacerbate the irritation that's caused by retinol. Also, retinol formulations tend to be crappy. 